Uh, hello, welcome to another Made for Man Caves video. In this one, we're going to lo be looking at ARDX or Ardelix. Um, this was requested by uh, someone who looked in the, watched another one of the videos. So I'm going to go through uh, ARDX and first sponsorship. So if you'd like, go to Patreon, uh, Made for Man Caves. You can throw a couple bucks my way. Uh, email me at madeformancaves at gmail.com if you have any custom reports, analysis, questions, anything you want to talk about. And check out a sponsor, learnatlibrary.com. Uh, it's a Salesforce integrated customer onboarding and success platform. Uh, so if you have customers and they are onboarded or anything like that, uh, they do content management, business processes, different things like uh, in that area. Been around for uh, since 2016, so small company, but but um, record of success. Uh, in terms of caveats, this is not investment advice. Uh, I'm just sharing my due diligence with you. Uh, investing carries risk. You can lose money. It happens. Um, just be careful. And then background analysis. So just so you understand what I'm trying to present here, uh, I'm usually trying to answer these five questions. So what do I buy in terms of um, investments? When do I buy it? How do I buy it? When do I sell it? And how do I manage my risk? That's what I'm looking for. So I'm trying to answer those questions. Is this something I want to buy? When should I do it? Um, all of those types of things, I think is pretty clear. That's what I'm doing in background analysis. And let's start the, with the company price story. So I think the big question with Expo, Exfosa, which would be the brand name, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, or ADO, ARDX, Artelix, um, is like Spectrum, Blue, um, Imogen, IMGN, uh, some other ones, SCYX, um, YMAB, YMAB, these, all these stocks kind of facing the same issue. The FDA was really busy last year with COVID and the year before the, the government was busy with that. So all of these other trials and things that were going on, they, I don't know if they, I would say they got pushed off to the side, but they may have not gotten the responses that would have been expected. And now at this point in 2022, a lot of them, they're facing uh, cash issues, they're facing ad comms, they're facing, um, you know, the FDA is really addressing uh, these companies and their their treatments and, and their trials. Um, so that's why you see a lot of ad comms, you see a lot of uh, PDFA dates, you, and you see a lot of companies that are facing cash issues. I think ARDX really falls under this. Of the ones that I've looked at, ARDX looks to be the one that's performing the best. And I think that's because of the potential market and also uh, nephrologists are really behind it. So they have um, a wellspring of physician backing that so far from what I've seen, I'll get to that where that where I see that. So why are you looking at a, th a Thanksgiving dinner here? So um, to put Expo Exposa in the perspective. Here's a question. Did you know, or do you know when heart disease patients are currently under treatment or most likely to be admitted in the emergency room? And the answer to that is actually holidays. So um, adherence to dietary measures that are given to these types of patients, these are heart disease patients, these are um, uh, kidney disease patients, these are patients who require a tremendous amount of day-to-day -day maintenance. Dialysis is a, a tremendous amount of maintenance. Um, where things like phosphate and sodium levels are important, um, they have these holiday dinners. They they um, overeat. They have some kind of issue, and they end up in the hospital. And sometimes they end up being admitted, and sometimes they die. Um, that happens pretty often. From what I've this is hearsay, but I've been told this by many nurses and doctors. I work around them. Um, I'm not one, but I work around them, and I think that's what you're talking about with Exposa is. It's, it's not just that they have a no, novel approach to phosphorus management. Um, it's that they have an approach that is easier to adhere to. Um, fewer tablets and fewer pills per day with a significant or a fairly significant um, amount of results. Now, why did the FDA reject it last year, um, Tenopore for uh, phosphorus management? We'll talk about that in a second. So. A little more background. So they were started in 2007, I believe, for gastrointestinal tract and kidney um, areas. Uh, Tenopore for hyperphosphatemia. 
which is elevated levels of phosphate in the blood, common with chronic kidney disease, people who are on dialysis. Uh, they have two other trials, RDX13 for hyperkalemia and RDX 020 for metab metabolic acidosis. So again, they are targeting kidney um, treatments for different types of areas for uh, chronic kidney disease. This is a, a link to the trial that was submitted March, 2021 or, or completed then that was ultimately used in the, uh, uh, the decision in July, 2021 from the FDA, which was a CRL requesting additional information. And here's some important background information. So 550,000 patients with CKD on dialysis, 80% have need treatment for hyperphosphatemia. Um, this is a first in class phosphate absorption inhibitor, uh, three trials, more than 1,000 patients, high awareness by nephrologists, 8,000 nephrologists, um, or 80% uh, have, they, they have evidence that they are aware of this as a treatment and um, ARDX is, has pursued a formal dispute and the result of that is the November ADCOM. So this is a point from the trial. Um, lower band is the placebo, higher band is the results from um, Exposa uh, and they were able to, um, patients were able to reduce uh, serum phosphorus as you can see, so it, it, it's effective, or at least according to this. Uh, phosphorus management is challenging for patients on dialysis. They can take up to 10 to 12 pills per day. Exposa brings it down to two pills per day. Um, clinical relevance for tenopanor is clear in terms of uh, adherence, and this is a novel approach. Um, and this is from a doctor. They um, applaud Artelix for their persistence. So that's good. Uh, these are the different appeals that have occurred. Um, let's see, I've had multiple ones. Uh, they do have some partners, Kiowa in Japan, Fosun in China, Knight Therapeutics in Canada, and they currently have Ibs Ibs Ibsrella for IBS, which has been approved. Here's the price story. I think the price story is interesting and it's interesting and relevant as well. So point one here, they raised about $75 million to get started. Um, started their trials, a little bit of an issue with money. Another raise at 110 million, started falling off. They got the Tenopanor first trial endpoint was reached, but they had adverse events with regards to diarrhea for Isbrella, which brought the pricing down. Um, they got an approval, and then here's the rejection for the the tenop or the exposa for CKD patients, and that is been here. So this is really their clinical stage um, here. First approval, additional um, indications for tenopanor, and their first rejection, and now they're bringing new data, and we haven't or they have an adcom. Um, I think the good thing here is that they're very stable in their price. Notice how it doesn't, not a 10 of, like they're not going up, they're not going down. It is, it is very stable. Even after rejection, it's been very stable. And this is, this is a period where the market was up and then way down. They have never had that. So I look at that as a good thing. I look at this as kind of old history, raising money. The question is they're going to have to raise money again. It, it looks like they will. So founded 2007, um, gastrological and, and nephrology, uh, phosphorus management, losing 10 million per, or per month or spending that. They have about six months, I think February. Isbrella is approved, Exposa is what they're looking for. Two trials that are planned with no real dates, large market, half a million patients per year on chronic kidney disease. And the big date is 16 November, 2022. Um, so their technicals, low price has been 50 cents, high is $1.92, but that's 52 weeks. If you go out six, one more month, it was up around eight. Market cap, almost 200 million shares, large shares. I, I'm, I'm a little hesitant right now with these large shares because they're easy to manipulate. Float of 153 million. 
uh, enterprise value 164 million average volume is about three and it's been relatively steady with the price increase life live cash estimate about 66 million which means they, they have a short runway losing money every month cash burn about 10 and a half million insider equity is about 3.4 low debt um, they do have more than a million per month uh, for Isbrella so it's not enough to cover what they're Spending, but that's what it is. Uh, November 7th, they haven't put a date for RDX. It's probably on hold because they don't have the cash. And by February, they're going to have to have some kind of raise. Chart analysis. So I call this the COVID cup and handle because a lot of companies look like this now where they have an April um, high. This was about a dollar 50 cent low back up to about $1.28. By this number, one thirty would be their breakout point. Um, but I think a lot of companies look like this and I don't know if I trust it as much anymore. I wanna look at something else. So I'm not gonna skip this into two. Um, we'll go right into the playbook. Um, so if you wanna throw some bucks my way, we do have a Patreon page. Email me at made for ma madeformancaves at gmail.com. Check out the sponsor, Learn It Library. It's a Salesforce integrated customer onboarding platform. Let's look at the bulls and the bears. Important date, 16 November, February. They're gonna need cash. High price and low price, one, nine, and two, if you use a cup and handle pattern. Um, they have already hit their breakout point, meaning they're beyond it. They're at $1.33, $1.38. It would have been around, um, uh, like 110, 115, around that, or a little bit low. It would have been lower than 108. So 109 at a minimum would have been their breakout point. So they're they're past it if you go by that chart, um, which is like here. Oh yeah, here were the highs. That was the retrace. It would have been 109. So they're way past their, their breakout point. Um, and that, that may be accurate, maybe. I like this chart. Um, so this is, let's look at, I like this chart because here's their breakout. Retrace, this was the Powell speech. And then they broke out right afterwards, which is, it's a real nice breakout. But I think this shows, even if you go all the way back to their 50 cent low, they've always had a, an uptick. Um, like they're, they're always moving up, which is, which is really nice. There, there hasn't been like, you've got that, that long thing going on with spectrum or that long craziness with blue. This is, this is real nice and steady up. And I think the reason is because, um, it's pretty clear nephrologists are behind, um, Exposa. It's clear that there's a large patient population. It's clear that there's a need. They're going to have to do a raise, but I, I, I think that this chart shows a really positive um, thing occurring. They have about 60 to 70 cents um, in the upwards range that they could climb going into that ad common 16 November. And they're really steady. This was a major day in the markets. Um, this 825 with Powell at Jackson, Jackson hole. And they lost some, 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 uh, price, you know, about 15 cents, but regained it real quick um, with and, and steady uh, volume. Volume's been up. So this this to me is a is a, a resilient chart. It shows me resilience um, for this this stock. So I, I like this. I think it retraces a lot, um, which means there's some day traders in there. Right now they're not too active. Um, and you can see that with the 3.6 million volume, um, average is 3.2. So it's not like Spectrum where you have 47 million in one day That's with no price action. That's, that's day traders playing a lot of games, someone playing games. This is, this is not quite on the radar yet, it looks like, which is nice. Um, I think I, I like this stock. I'll put it like that. Um, so target, I would put $2 pre ad com. I think there's a nice po patient population and a lot of support from nephrologists, which is good because ad com is essentially their chance to, um, say what they want to say. 
they're already past their, their breakout line in the technical pattern. They need cash, so there will be dilution at some point. So if you buy now, you know, you're, you're going to pay a little bit of a premium to buy now. Adcom will decide the future. Um, bear summary cash is an issue. So do they run out of money before they get this approval when they have, they have the potential? They're going to have to raise money. It's probably going to happen. But we'll see. And the neutral summary, I'm saying this now, just watching Spectrum, watching Blue, watching these other PDUFA plays right now and these other adcom plays. Um, there are a lot of people in the market and they know who, who are smart. They know that people buy into these things with the expectation they're going to make a lot of money real quick. And then what they do is they stop that from happening and people sell off at a loss. So that's something to watch for is that high volume neutral price action where where there's manipulation going on um not happening yet here uh this stock looks to be going pretty well but it could happen as you get closer to adcom especially if you see high volume people thinking that they're going to go into adcom and suddenly have um a really solid uh people who are you know buying for they think that they're gonna they're gonna make a lot of money really quick and when you have that, somebody steps in, they just keep it from happening and they can they can um, win. So um, things to consider, again, check out Patreon, email me, uh, learn at library, check it out if that's something you, if you have customers and you need to uh, um, need an onboarding and success platform. And I'll call that it. Thanks so much. Have a good one.